Hey guys, today we are talking about Ford Edge, uh, so actually 2015 to 2018 model, and doing some mods to the front grill. Thought it would be helpful to share some basic info. We're not going to be talking about how the grill actually fully comes out because there are videos on YouTube for how to remove the bumper, but here's what I find to be helpful. So your 15 to 18 edge grill, um, at least in my instance, it's a titanium uh, edition, not the sport, has uh, three pieces. You have the main surround of the grill, which attaches to the bumper with various clips. And that's also how it can come out of the bumper. You have the chrome in the case of the titanium. Um, and I think maybe even all the other, just about the majority of the other models, the chrome inserts that go over this round. And then you also have removable slats. So in the case of titanium, I had three s these matte silver slats. You have this bottom one with clips that connect into the back of the, the black surround of the grill. And then you have, well, the top one really is just basically the exact same one, except it's a bit longer. And it's obviously um, going to include more a couple more clips. And then in the instance of titanium, there's also a middle slat that looks like this because as part of the insert uh, configuration, there is the emblem that would normally go here. And right now, I already have the grill modded, which you'll see shortly. So what you're looking at here, and I'll explain in a minute why, is a slat from a 2017 Ford Edge Sport. This is what the middle slat looks like for that one. And it's the configuration that has the, ca the front camera holes in it, at least in USDM, that is a, a predominant feature. And also the way this is configured impacts how the emblem is mounted and how that cutout is. Back to the, well, I should, sorry, I should come back to this. But outside of the middle slat, whether it's an edge sport or a titanium or potentially some of the other lower trims, you're still going to have three slats. It's just that in the instance of a sport, you have a piano black, this like shiny polished look. In the event of the titanium, you have this matte silver insert piece. So what I was not a fan of is having all this chrome which yes, I could certainly paint or plasti dip or do something like that. But instead I thought, you know what, wouldn't it be something if instead we took this whole thing apart and essentially Frankensteined it from OEM parts without any custom paint or anything of that sort. So what I did is I stalked eBay for a couple of months and found a junked 2017 Edge um, that had a, that was getting parted out, Edge Sport. So this insert of the grill that you're looking at is actually from the Sport model. That's what this cutout here is. It's for the purposes of marrying up the badge with the camera hole configuration of the middle slat that we were looking at over there before. But the problem with this surround is that, and this is not critical, it had this side broken clip, no big deal, it can totally be inserted and work without issue, but it was also scuffed up right here. You have these scuffs and there's a number of them kind of around the sides. So what I essentially did was I took the surround off of my 17 edge, ripped off the chrome, took the used 17 sport, ripped off the insert that that has and the slats, 
and I put the two together into my titanium surround for what I believe to be a cleaner and meaner look. And we will talk about that in a second. So a couple of points of importance here. When separating the chrome surround from the background, or the back surround, whatever you wanna call it, just be very mindful of all these inserts and clips. Some of these act like a clip, which you see here. There's kind of that little pop-up that can be pushed out. Some act, and then here's a couple more different types of clips that pop into the back of the surround. And some are basically guides. They're not clips, they're just these guides that ensure that if the bumper flexes a little bit, whether it's under high wind resistance or I don't know what else they were thinking, track conditions, <laughs> I'm not sure what, but regardless, that it ensures that the accent stays firmly in place inside of the surround, not only through the clips that hold it there hard, but also through some guide holes that additionally help retain the rigidity of the accent and the background uh, of the insert. So if in the instance of my titanium, they actually did not do this, but in the instance of maybe it's just this sport, but I have to assume this is done for a lot of them. Not sure if I just drew a lucky straw or what. So what they did for those inserts that are not clips, they used an epoxy. And you can see some remnants of it when I was trying to break out the original insert of the sport. So they used in those instances that are not clips and are just slots for those guides that I was showing, they threw an epoxy to further help force that guide in place so that it doesn't pop out and then either the surround or the slat get out of line or alignment or even worse pop out completely which I can assure you having redone this insert about four times for various reasons um, that's really not much of a risk to have to worry about something like that. So you, see, you could see a residue of some of the epoxy that I had to break down in order to get the sport surround out of this. And you'll see again in a minute what that looks like. Um, just safe to say that for the sport surround, it is not chrome. That was my whole mission, get rid of this awful chrome that for some reason most American manufacturers think designates luxury and try to go with the sport piano black but I improvised even beyond that and you'll see that in a second. For the slats, a couple of points that are similar that are very important to keep in mind when you're doing any replacement or customization. Similar to the accent of the grill, the slats have actual clips that hold them in place inside of the grill surround, but then they also have similar concept of the accent of these straight kind of guide guides or not pins, but you get the idea. So these things line up inside of the surround shroud there not only with clips, but also with these straight inserts to again ensure alignment of the slat inside of the grill so that it does not, so that they don't start popping out or come out of alignment. And believe me, I learned quite a bit in doing this that that very problem could very well exist, especially when you try to pull the bumper off and then put it back on by holding the grill. Quick side note, very important. When you are replacing the bumper back on after doing this, do not hold the grill 
or I'm sorry, do not hold the bumper by the grill when trying to lift it back onto the car. Chances are you can mess around with these slats inadvertently, go through all the reinstall, and before you know it, one of the clips is out of alignment and your slat looks crooked inside the grill. Definitely frustrating as heck. Technically speaking, I should have also mentioned that the emblem surround is also its own separate piece. So really, your grill consists of the main shroud surround, or whatever you want to call that, the accent uh, trim piece, and the three slats. That's five items. And then six is the emblem surround. And if you really, I guess, want to go OCD, seventh piece would be the emblem itself, which of course is not in here right now because it's on the newly modified grill, which we'll show in a second. But I wanted to note an important distinction between a sport configuration and titanium configuration. With the sport, again, you have this cutout just like you have this jut out in the middle slat which lines up with it in order for the camera the front camera sensor setup so technically in a sport you'll see there's going to be a cutout at the bottom of the emblem surround as well so that it can line up properly if I were to try to take the titanium emblem put it onto a sport grill that has the camera option, I would not be able to do it. It would not line up. There would be a conflict right here between the bottom of the silver matte silver surround of titanium and the camera hole option of the center slat. It would pop in to the surround itself, that's fine, but then the slat match is going to be an issue. And could I do this grill instead, uh, or I'm sorry, this insert instead, um, yeah, sure, I probably could do that. Um, except you'll see in a minute why this may not necessarily work if I'm using mix a different shroud from a 17 Sport on my 17 Titanium. So the final product looks like this. For titanium, or I'm sorry, for Ford Edge Sport, the insert instead of chrome is actually for a whole number of them, and I don't know if this is true for every one around 16, 17 or not, so don't quote me there, but for most of them, the insert is actually not black, but is more of this like gunmetal dark silver, which happens to match almost identical to the color of this particular edge which is also I believe titanium silver is the actual color of it so that worked out even better than I thought and here's what we did so we have the OEM piano gloss, gloss piano black upper slat we have the factory OEM matte silver middle slat and we have factory OEM gloss piano black bottom slat decided to do it this way for a couple of reasons. One is titanium comes with a silver accent at the bottom, so I thought it would be kind of cool to replicate that in the middle, uh, to just kind of break it up with the black, just for the looks. You guys remember I was talking about the emblem surround. The emblem surround was silver on the titanium, so I went with the sports black to have a black surround, and then I'm probably going to end up blacking this out with an overlay. And then here, since this is part of the sport package layout, it's hard to see with this lighting, but there's actually a cutout that I kept talking about right here under the emblem, because normally there would be a camera hole and sensor that's feeding off of the piano black middle slat on a sport. And it's not a big deal at all, the fact that it's under here without being covered, you could see some stuff un under and through there. Guess what, actually, if anything, that makes it a little bit easier for me if I wanted to now, to go right behind here and pop out this emblem 
if I ever wanted to. So it's actually kind of a handy little thing. Believe me, you're not damaging much of anything behind of there by doing that. So again, the one thing is that I was not able to do, I still had to go through the bumper removal process, popping the uh, three bolts, four or five fender well bolts, the top and sides under the hood to be able to pop the bumper. Technically, if you didn't want to rip, rip the entire bumper off, you can get two, depending on your hand size. Probably you get it just loose enough and off of the brackets that it's hanging by to get behind and reach maybe as far as the second slat. But if you're going to want to try to go for the third slat, you're definitely going to need to have the whole bumper off, meaning taking off the bolts underneath to take the whole thing off. But this is the look we ended up with. So this is truly kind of an interesting thing to be able to say this is an original modified grill, which is like a contradiction in terms because every single piece is fully factory, not modified. I did not paint or touch anything other than just repurpose pieces of a sport and a titanium grill and mix and match them. So I think it's a pretty cool look. See what you think.